Are you ready to get your feet wet? Because this is The Knowledge Pool, hosted by Gathering Information. We're here to bring you a casual conversation between friends about everything to do with collecting, trading, and playing Magic the Gathering. I am Tams. I am Steph. And I am Laura. So put on your bathing suits and dive right into The Knowledge Pool. Hey, we are here with DraftCat. That's right, the official mascot. <laughs> the, I, I guess it is official now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Although I, I don't know how much he likes pools. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually, this cat, quite a bit, I'm guessing. So, hey guys, we're back to podcast again, mm-hmm, because yeah. we like podcasting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to drink my tea. And I had to shove the cat, and he's still not getting off my chair. He's like, nope, sorry, I'm here. I, to be fair, I am a bedding. In the, the, the cat's tank. Eating right? and abetting. It's true, it's true. <laughs> and I fed them so that they would go away, but apparently... It <laughs> you also left the, the lid, lid off the, the food? <laughs> that could be bad. <laughs> we'll have a full view if there ends up being a cat riot from here. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about cat. Well, I mean... Should someone there go and close the lid? are going to be cats in Amon yeah. Cat. Nah, we're fine. Oh, there's totally going to be cats. Kathleen's going to be so happy. We're, we're with Draft Cat. We have to mm-hmm. talk about cats. You think so? Um... Another place where they're going to be at least one cat is, uh, is oh, this am I wrong? Are there no cats in Modern Masters? Hold on. I have to look. <laughs> Surely. It's totally going to ruin his segue. There are splicers. Surely there are creatures that are all other creatures in addition to their creature type. There's ah, a path so to exile. It, it looks like a cat being exiled, so. Also, okay. Lingering Souls makes 1-1 one, one cat spirits that aren't actually cats, but they're cats in spirit. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. We got there, sort of. Loading not really. around for reference. <laughs> yeah. So, hi, guys. Um, welcome to the Knowledge Pool. I am Tams. To my left is Laura. And, and, and Draft Cat. And to her left is Draft Cat. And yep. to the extreme around the world left is me. Hi. Hi, I'm Steph. So uh, we've got lots of stuff that we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. So uh, shall we jump into current news? Sure. What What's going on? Because I don't actually know. Yeah, not super much. We're kind of in like a, a lull. Um, but all of the Modern Master spoilers have been released. It's kind of funny how like spoiler season went, came and went. And now the whole set has been spoiled. And now for the next week, nobody cares because yeah. it's not... Draftable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I mentioned it whilst off the air, but apparently Sam Stoddard, who's one of the uh, Wizards people who's active on Twitter, uh-huh. uh, suggested that rather than spoiling Damnation with the rest of the spo- with the rest of the high profile spoilers like Liliana and Snapcaster, that they should instead just wait to release it with all the rest of the spoilers on Friday. Yeah. And drive people out of their minds bonkers. That would have been good. <laughs> it would have been pretty funny. <laughs> But oh, um, so mean. Yeah, so nothing else super exciting, I guess, has been released depending on your point of view. But they've already spoiled all the splashy mythics and everything like that. So it was most just mostly just the uh, the commons and uh, you know things like that, just filling out archetypes. And it looks like it's going to be very value packed. Do we have any favorite like commons from the set that were? interested in anybody no. i noticed that there is a lot of cube stuff floating around and we all know how much i like cube yep. mm-hmm. um one of my favorite cards from when i started whoops, there's a beep one of my favorite cards from when i kind of restarted really getting deep into magic is actually in this set and i forgot how good it was it's attended night and it's basically Glint Sleeve Artisan with First Strike. And what does that mean, Steph? Uh, it is a 2-2 two, two yeah. for 2 and a white. And it's a human knight instead of a whatever Glint Sleeve Artisan is. Uh, artificer, artificer. I think. And it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token mm-hmm. instead of a servo. Sure. But it's basically 3 power and toughness on 2 bodies for... Three mana. Which I love cards like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're great. They're Except value. This one also has first strike, which is sweet. <laughs> which is really sweet. So that little bleep. I apologize for the noise. I forgot to turn the sound off my computer. That was somebody contacting me about time and place for when we're all getting together to draft. <laughs> said said. Draft yeah. this set right now. Yeah. yeah. So that's how, the how about um, when does it come out? Seventeenth. How about the seventeenth? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah, well, just uh, getting back a little bit to the uh, the common spoilers. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the reasons that people hated, basically, Modern Masters 50 and the last Modern Master set was just that there was, unless you opened a bomb mythic, or one of the very few super expensive cards, mm -hmm. you essentially were opening up like $3 worth of value for a $10 pack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's fair. Um I believe these packs are also going to be stinking expensive. Yes, I'm sure. But at least there's, like, playables in them. Oh. Well, it's no, not even yeah. that. Like, even if you don't open up, you know, that $30 uh, Lily or whatever, assuming she drops that low, I suppose, you know, you're still going to get probably on average about your money's worth in commons, uncommons, rares, unless you're, you know, unlucky or super lucky, then you're probably still going to... At mm. least get what you paid for, and Sounds you're going to be able to 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 grab some of those uh, cube staples mm. that that everybody wants to have, which mm -hmm. is exciting. And I think I am definitely interested in making a non cube cube, like the 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 cube that's not just full of the busted stuff. So. Mm -hmm. I, uh, this this set has a lot of that kind of stuff in it. I think for me, one of the exciting things is getting a chance to play with cards that I haven't necessarily had a chance to play with before. That were you know either out way before I was playing or just way out of my price range. <laughs> Although there's also <laughs> stuff that you'll recognize. Oh, like, there's a lot of stuff you know, in there. Sin Collector absolutely was from RTR block. Yeah, I noticed a couple of RTR cards that I was like, hey, I know There's that card. a bunch of them. Because I loved that lock. Yeah. And so. I don't know if you guys saw, disappointingly, uh, the initial archetype for blue-black was supposed to be ninjas. Really? Oh. And then they changed it because they didn't have enough support for it. Dang it. Uh, that's fair. That would have been fun. Basically, if you're talking about ninjas, you're reprinting all of the ninjas from Kamigawa, yep. and that's it. <laughs> so what is the archetype, do you know? I don't remember. Well, there's Evil Twin. Um, what other blue-black cards are in here? You know what it... Uh, Moroi? Yes. Flying... Uh, Lifesteal... Sold. Um, yeah, it's a good card. I've, I've seen <laughs> people draft with it, and it can be exactly what you need to finish the game. Ooh, what is that? Agony Warp. Agony Warp? It's a uh, target creature gets minus three, minus zero oh until end of turn, and... Same or different, target creature gets minus O oh, minus three until end of turn. Oh, oh. So in combat. Blue black is going to be and that's it. for a blue and a black. Which it looks like a cool. very straight up control deck. Like Dinrova Horrors in there. That's the best kind of deck. Um, so yeah, it looks like blue black is the control colors. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. So anything else we want to talk about Modern Masters wise? I'm Can just. Be now? Yeah, let's step that. We're kind of like we're. I want to open it now. Yeah, we're we're after the spoilers, but before the release. So That's all the we worst get to time do is sit around and think about how much we'd like to draft it. Yeah. Um, something we did find out, and something that I I don't know how many people this affects. Probably other um, people who play online for channels. Um, it will be draftable on Mitgo. Yeah, it was a big question for us because it's something we really wanted to get to do. Launches on Mitgo, I want to say on the twenty second, so, so basically exciting. five days after. Yeah, and I'm super stoked. For that. The thing that I thought was interesting is there's huh no Jace the Mind Sculpt. Oh, <laughs> Snapcaster, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. there is actually no Jace card at all in the set. And I'm no, just so there are that. two yeah. Planeswalkers. Uh, one is red green and one is black. Mm -hmm. So. What does blue get? It gets Snapcaster. What does white get? Uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Just, just good stuff. So what else is going on in the news besides Modern Masters? Yeah, um, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, you may or may not be aware of this, but a couple of weeks ago, SCG, for one of their uh, events, they did what's called Team Constructed. That's, I'm sorry, Star City Games? Yes. Okay. So they... Uh, they put on, you know, magic uh, competitions of various levels yep. multiple times throughout the year. So they had done one team constructed where basically you get together as a team of three. So you and two other people. And for this particular event, anyway, one person plays standard, one person plays modern, and one person plays legacy. That sounds oh. amazing. That's neat. Not only is, like, three-player team events are some of my favorites, mm -hmm. but... That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, like you get the advantages of getting to play in a serious competition with a bunch of friends 
with your preferred format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's really cool. So yeah, it uh, and the way that the coverage works, of course, generally speaking, with most events, once their one of their coverage events finishes or they take a break between games or something like that, they then have to scramble to find something else to cover because if another coverage or another feature match isn't currently playing or anything like that, then they have you know random people walking around chatting with contestants or whatever. Right. So with uh, the way that they had this set up, once let's say they were focusing on the standard match they could then just switch over to the modern match and they already had the cameras right there and they were ready to go even if it was partway through a match. You'd think it would kind of go the other way with modern being as quick as it's supposed to be. Yeah, the, but... and the other nice thing about it was that they actually did take that into account. Mm. So with uh, team-constructed events, uh, it is uh, best of three between the three people, but as soon as uh, two people on the same team have won best of three, the third set, they just stop playing. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter what the outcome is, so they don't have to keep going. That's generally how it works in Team Sealed, mm -hmm. too, just because there's no point in continuing. Yeah, exactly. So the thing, though, is that the uh, the people who were handling the feature matches, they would specifically pick the ones that they felt would matter the most. Mm, so if okay. they thought that the modern versus, uh, you know, the modern uh, match would finish before the standard match and one of them could be the decider, they would go to the modern match, because if it finished in a particular way, standard didn't even matter, and they probably wouldn't finish anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. So, anyways, the point is that everybody absolutely loved the way that they had it set up. Like, it was really fun to watch. I watched the whole thing, and I usually don't. Um, and so... Because once was, you've seen one standard yeah. game, you've seen them all? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was just really nice to be able to switch between different formats and in different rounds. So, um, yeah, they uh, were also, it was super popular with viewers, it was super popular with the participants. They had people traveling from a lot farther than you usually get for these type of SCG events. And so they have announced that they have changed the format of one of their upcoming events to the same thing. And they raised the player cap, and they're telling people to register as soon as possible because they expect to fill up. So wow. when, where's the next event? Uh, I don't recall. Okay. Sorry. But, um, yeah, it's, it's something I'm quite looking forward to. It seems like it's going to be pretty sweet. If they bring one of those anywhere close to us, <laughs> I would love to try it. I, yeah. will, um, I will go find out where it is, mm -hmm. and I will link it in the show notes. So yeah. by okay. the time you sure. guys hear this, it will the information will be... We'll hope by the time people hear this, it will still matter. Yes, I'm <laughs> sure it will. It's not for a while. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, so that's, um, I think, great news. People are constantly trying to evolve the way that Magic does coverage. Yeah. And so this seems to be a fantastic step in, a, in the right direction. Yeah, sounds really cool. Um, I don't actually know that much about... Well, I know a little about Modern because I talk to people who know about Modern, mm -hmm. but I know almost nothing about... Is it Vintage or Legacy? Legacy. Legacy. Um, because I'm a noob <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to Eternal formats. But yeah, I am... I, I feel like that would be a really good way to get to know something. About yeah, absolutely. Because you get your to dip your toe in with standard, you pretty much know what standard is if you watch any standard. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, what's this other weird thing that's happening? Mm -hmm. That sounds it's really cool. cool. Yeah, and I love team stuff. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. So uh, since you were talking about standard, one other thing. I thought we could talk about is the fact that the ban and restricted announcements are coming up next week. Mm. Mm. Next week? Yeah. Really? So wow. The thing is, is that, um, so for standard, or for all formats actually, uh, they usually have uh, one ban and restricted announcement every multiple season. months. Yeah, yeah. Every season, basically. Um, but then last season, essentially, they then decided that they wanted to ban multiple cards from Standard, which is the first time that that's happened in ages. So they banned uh, Smuggler's Copter and Emrakul and Reflector Mage. Yeah. And they also at that time said, and we're also adding another potential ban restricted announcement change shortly after the Pro Tour, because at that point we'll have more information about how the pros managed to break the format. Yeah, sort of a mid-season thing. And when it first came out, I thought, well, that's really weird. But then I thought about it a lot, and with the way they changed Standard and had to change it um, partially back so mm -hmm. that Standard lasts yeah, longer. Yeah, with the rotation? Uh, with, yeah, Standard rotation, um, so that more 
uh, sets are still standard so that people don't get uh, tired of not being able to play their cards, mm -hmm. which makes sense. It also makes sense that they would want to still shake things up a little with a mid-season ban. Well... It's, it's not ideal for anyone, really, yeah. but it might be better than the days of Pack Rat being around for two years and everyone pulling their hair out. I mean, first of all, they don't have to announce anything, is, is one of the key things. If they That's decide true. that the format is fine, they will just say, yep, everything's great, we're amazing at our jobs, see you later next week. And I'm going <laughs> to ask you a question on that after you're finished saying what you're sure. about to say. So, but, and, and it's not limited to standard, if they wanted to make a modern change... It gives them an additional opportunity to do so, although, again, they can simply choose not to do anything. Right. But um, it just makes people a little nervous about buying into decks, especially when the first mm. standard bannings That's since fair. Jace, basically, yeah. happened. And now standard's getting a little stale again. There mm -hmm. are basically three decks, green, black, uh, four color, uh, crazy cat lady, and... Mm -hmm. Uh, in Marty vehicles, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, they were, they they made bannings in modern before just to shake things up, quote unquote, and uh, it means that you've wasted a fair amount of money if you bought those. Like well, the number of people who said, "But I bought smugglers' copters when they cost thirty dollars each, and a week later they are now five dollars." Yeah, and it's standard. It's not supposed to happen. People should have seen that one coming, <laughs> yes. though. Like. I knew that was going to happen when the very first big tournament mm -hmm. with uh, Smuggler's Copter, it was four for four in every single one of the top eight decks. It was. Yeah. That's a problem. And you don't even follow standard. <laughs> no. But, well, not really, but when something like that happens, I hear about it because I'm interested in those kind of details. Mm -hmm. um, what cards get played in standard, I... I kind of care about mm -hmm. more than what the deck lists are. Yeah. Um, I've never been one to build a top tier standard deck because usually when I'm building a standard deck, I like to take one of the Johnny cards and build a deck and see if it can compete. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they're glass cannons, but sometimes they're my assault formation deck that <laughs> actually worked. Yeah. So... Yeah. Solid concept that people just don't see coming. Yeah. Or yeah, and don't prepare for, yeah. right? Like that's the uh, the value of a rogue list is that yes. people tune their sideboards to the meta mm -hmm. and then don't see a toughness matters <laughs> deck coming or something, you know? Yeah. So I mean the way that the standard's been going like Wizards has said, Yeah, we screwed up with our entire design philosophy and we you won't see the changes that we have, you know, put into place from what we have learned of the situation mm. for another year or two years. Yeah. yeah. So, what does that mean for Standard for the next year or two? At the, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they also, well, at least Mark Rosewater has said, if you never have to ban a card, then you're not reaching far enough. Right. You know? but then you also have problems like, you know, they banned three cards, of which at least one was, well, I mean, Emrakul was expensive, but it wasn't four of in every deck, like Smuggler's Copters was. No, and isn't it still expensive because people want it for other reasons? Yeah, exactly. But um, Reflector Mage was the weird one. Like, <laughs> really? Well, you're hitting two of the three major decks. If yeah. you don't hit something like that, then what's going to happen to Blue-White? It's going to become 75% of the metagame instead. Yeah, but, yeah, that's fair. You know, then you still have people saying, but there's Gideon which is a very powerful card, and now it's going to be in standard for, what, six months longer than they had originally intended to. Mm -hmm. And you have the Sahili, uh, uh, you know, infinite combo, where they admitted, yeah, we totally didn't even notice that was a thing, sorry, our bad. Yeah. <laughs> it must be a really, uh, it's a fine line that they have to dance on, because they can do as much testing pre-launch of a set as they want, but they're never going to catch everything, and they're never going to catch the reality of pros putting together decks and going out and trying to crack stuff. So it must be really hard to anticipate certain things. 
even just because they have such a small team compared to the yes. yeah. thousands or possibly millions of Magic players out there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, I've, I've read some of uh, what happens for testing, and uh-huh. basically a few people get together and try out some new cards. Yeah. And then changes are made after that, but nobody tests the changes. Now, the thing about... Yeah. <laughs> decks and metas too is that they have some time to put hosers into the next set that is true for specific archetypes but it would be almost impossible to hose like smug- smuggler's copter because it's a very cheap not uh, non-restrictive like it's colorless mm-hmm. card that has a very cheap activated ability and just generates value right and so removal is not what it was. Unless they put something in that said, like, whenever you loot, um, you know, lose 10 life or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a very targeted yeah. uh, silver bullet, and that's never going to happen. Yeah. Whereas they could hose an archetype a little more easily. Well, maybe, but I think, I mean, they could, like in Omket, say, oh, now we've got, uh, you know, graveyard tape or whatever. Yeah. But that was probably fine 10 years ago. These days, a format gets solved within weeks, and suddenly you have to wait six more months for any sort of hate to come around. Like that again leads to kind of stale standards where everybody's just playing the same decks. We say it gets solved within weeks, but how long did it actually take for the? Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the deck, the one that Emrakul was in. Oh, the Delirium. Yeah, to to shift from what it was to what it was before Emrakul got banned. From what it was in Shadows to what it was in Kaladesh. Uh, well, it wasn't... I mean, I think that it kind of helped when they had the, you know, the Aetherworks Marvel or whatever to, like, yeah. cast it, and then suddenly you were like, well, now I have multiple reasons to have it in my deck. I can hard cost cast it if I need to, or I yeah. can just uh, get it into play on turn four. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's a really tricky situation is the thing, because no matter what, you're not going to make people happy. If, if they do announce that there's a banning in one, two, or all three of the main decks that are currently in the meta, that's going to be, A, weird in a precedent-setting fashion, because there's nothing wrong with the decks. Like, there isn't one card like Smuggler's Copter that is, yeah. you know, completely just in 100% of all the decks or anything like that. They're just very strong decks and they st- also happen to follow the rock paper scissor- scissors model of aggro uh control and combo which is what wizards has always said they strive for in standard that's true it's just that between the three of them they are like 95 percent of decks mm. that are played at a competitive level mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if they do ban something i mean suddenly everybody has to find new decks and they're all out the money for the cards that are no longer used and it's a precedent and it'll make people upset and if they don't are people going to keep playing standard for the next couple months? Hmm. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see. Now you bring up an interesting uh, question, at least to me, which is we haven't mentioned combo. Uh, we didn't mention it in the last episode. That is true. Um, we sort of... Uh, but we skimmed through it when you said that you like to consider it when you're deck building. Yes. Um, but we kind of... Uh, slotted ourselves into the aggro control and mid-range uh, seats. That's true. Uh, what do you think of combo as a deck builder? Well, okay, so I'll be honest. I am a control player at heart, absolutely. Uh-huh. Um, but when it comes to standard, I'm A, cheap, <laughs> and B, I find it gets kind of boring if you just are playing the same matchups over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and our the the uh, game store that we go to, it's not super competitive. Not like uh, at least half the field are just brewing and yep. building their own decks, especially for games day. I really need to get back out because that's the kind of environment I love. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, last time I was actually at a game day, mm-hmm. it was um, all uh, the top tier decks, but budget versions. Right. And that's why I kind of stopped going. Yeah. <laughs> but then I heard it has shifted, especially since modern has become a big thing at the yeah, store. Yeah, it has. So the... The spikes go to modern. The spikes go to modern, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so I tend, when I'm playing standard, which I don't do that often on a weekly basis, I do sometimes show up, but mm-hmm. I always show up for games day. 
And for the last few game days, I've been kind of dabbling. Like, um, okay. for, uh, I think, three games a day back, I came in with the brain in a jar, uh, part <laughs> the water veil, uh, creating oh, zombies fun. at instant speed, and then just winning the game deck. And to be honest, I did really well with that. I came in second on the first day, and I still prized the second day, even after people knew I was coming. <laughs> when you say making zombies, it makes me happy, because the my favorite thing to do in any format that I can do it is cast... Uh, Army, is it Army of the Damned? And then flashback Army of the Damned. <laughs> okay. And make uh, 26 zombies and attack you my opponent. You are a monster. <laughs> I just love I it so much. It's, it's <laughs> so flavorful. So, yeah, I, I would consider that type of deck to be as close as you normally get in standard to comboed kills. Like like I said, I, I really enjoy things like Part of the Water Veil, where you're just like, I will tap... 10 mana, mm -hmm. or 9 mana, put a bunch of 6-6, six, six, or a bunch of 1-1 one, one counters onto my land, which is now a 6-6, six, six, I will mm -hmm. attack you. And then on my next turn that I get to take right after this one, I will untap everything, I will pay another 9 mana to part the water veil again, and I will put another 6 counters on this one land, and then I will hit you in the face for 12, and I get to take an extra turn after this one. So, I that deck, that type of deck, which is one that I quite like, is definitely has some control -y aspects, but it's absolutely a combo kill at the end. <laughs> I regret never building Turbo Fog when it was in standard in uh, Origins. You can still build a Turbo Fog deck. Yeah, but... In Kaladesh, I've seen some deck lists and they look kind of fun. Alright, I might have to go look at some deck lists when we're done here. I, I've seen one called, uh, I think it's like, uh, Ula Fog. <laughs> where basically you're using the Inspiring Statuary to let you improvise off a bunch of clues that you get from casting all of your fog spells into the enchantment from uh, Shadows or from... Um, oh. I, I think Shadows, where you got to get a clue every time you cast an instant or sorcery. That sounds better than the deck I was building. <laughs> and then you just went with Ulamog. Yeah. yeah. I, that, my plan was to play all the 0, 1, and 2 drop artifacts with Inspiring Statuary and then cast Ulamog on turn 4. But yeah, there you go. So, yeah. so yes, I can appreciate combos, I, combo decks. I think that if you are getting tired of the format, or you think it's getting stale, or you just want some really interesting games where it's kind of, uh, you know, like, combo decks can be really complicated to play in mm -hmm. that you don't want to die, yeah. but sometimes you just need more time, so I quite like them, I consider them to be a lot a lot of times quasi-control at the very least. How about you, Agro? Yeah. Don't like them at all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like combo? I am not a fan of combo. It's too um, uncertain. Uh -huh. If you can't get your pieces... Yeah. But that's the point of a good combo deck, is you can always get your pieces. But you don't. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Do you enjoy playing against them? No. <laughs> well, yeah, it depends. Uh, as an aggro player, yes. Um, I, that's probably why when I have been successful against Riley's crazy decks, <laughs> it's because he spends so much time dirtling around trying to... Uh, trying to make it work? Trying to accumulate all of his pieces and bits yeah. that I'm just like, five... Yeah. Five, seven to your face. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're saying your version of a combo is dark ritual into master of the feast and swing. That was that was the best feeling. Cube experience. Yeah. Best cube. No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of really good cube experiences, but that one was amazing. It, I think the best part and the part that I struggle with was the look on the opponent's face because it was like. <gasps> I don't uh, think I can I deal with that. <laughs> what do I do with that? And I'm like, That's sorry, bigger than I expected. You take 20 and four turns. Yeah. I'm so sorry, but it feels so good. It does. It really does. Yeah. So what about you, Mr. I like, combo deck building? I, I like combos when I figure them out. Um, like, Okay, so traditional combos are what? Like something like... Uh, Twin? Is that yeah. a combo? Yeah, absolutely. I like or Time Walk Monastery Mentor. Sure. You just get to buy back all your extra turns. I like dabbling. Like I like trying them out, but I don't know if I could stick with a combo deck for any amount of time. Mm -hmm. Like Storm is combo, right? Sort of. Sure. Yeah, kind of. Um, and I would love to try that for an evening mm -hmm. or every once in a while break it out, but if I'm going to play a lot of something, it's going to be um, a more generic, consistent, consistent deck. 
Um, I mean, that's my mid range tells me <laughs> that I should be able to pivot and do whatever you're doing, but better or faster or stronger. Sure. Um, and in the case of combo, if I'm playing against combo, I kind of just want to be bashing face. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although and somebody to to uh, combo is aggro. Somebody, um, I don't remember who it was that said the reason that there are that counter spells are a good thing is because otherwise every format would just be combo decks. And I get that. I I hadn't thought of it that way before, but it made me feel better about counter spells. Me too. <laughs> I actually got a little warm fuzzy moment when I was like. That, that, makes, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can appreciate a good yeah. counterspell there. You know that red white doesn't have too many counterspells, right, Dems? Uh, I know. So, well, still white one. has a counterspell. It a has a, a counterspell. Counter <laughs> I like that card. I suppose Does white also have a stifle effect? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and red technically has um, uh, the pyroblast, right, which counters blue spell. That's true. So... So there, there, are, there are things you can do. Yeah, so there. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the color pie. <laughs> I, I totally want to do a conversation on the color pie at some point because it's on the list of stuff. I yeah. love the color pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we did have some other stuff that we wanted to chit chat about. Did we? Uh, yeah. So we have been drafting on Midgo, so Magic yeah, the Gathering have. Online, and um, we just want to talk a little bit about it. A couple of different things. One of the things is um, the frustration <laughs> of oh. when you're... We're um, talking about that, are we? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh. and Jane, it's, the, it's the whole variance aspect. When you're playing in a shop against friends or against whatever, when you hit a patch of variance, it's hard, but it's not the same as having to post a video every week. And losing constantly. So you're not just talking about MitGo here. You're talking about MitGo where other people are potentially watching. Yeah, and I'm sure people feel the same way who are doing um, pro tour stuff or whatnot. I'm sure there are lots of professional players who go through long stretches of problems with variants. And LSV didn't win. A, that's who I was thinking a game of for like a year. Right? Yeah, and that must be really hard, especially because you're inefficient. It's that you know everybody's focus is on you, and it's. You said the other night it was something that was really telling you, like, why are we doing this? Like, are, should we be doing this if we're just going to lose? What is the point? It was super frustrating because it was a case of, in one game, we drew something like ten land and four spells. So, yeah. obviously, that's not our fault unless we mulliganed wrong, right? Like, that's the only place that we had a handle on that. Mm -hmm. And the game lasted longer than it would have in less capable player's hands. Mm -hmm. But then there are things like uh, targeting your own la land with Chandra's revolution, which I continue to do online. And well, but that it was not a magic online thing. It would never happen but, in paper. But, and that's just it. It wouldn't happen in paper because... But admittedly, that's me getting excited <laughs> about clicking yeah. on my lands. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, which brings me to the other... Thing about Mitgo right now is the the leagues that they have brought in. Mm -hmm. So it's been what several months. Yeah, yeah. And we've had a good chance to kind of play with the different types of stuff in the leagues. And when uh, I first heard about them, I thought, okay, this could be a good thing. I'm gonna accept it and try it out and just focus on the positive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we have come to realize that the way we play, the way we're used to playing we know what else is at the table like we can see what else is being drafted and while i never i almost never uh hate pick anything i still know what i can expect from a draft yeah and so you just can't get that from the league yeah, so when you're building your deck you kind of know okay don't forget that we saw a lot of x cars or don't forget we passed that bomb chances are we may come up against it. Or even more generally, okay, we're in red-white. We got all the good red-white stuff. We don't have to worry about facing a red-white deck yeah. because there's no way that somebody else at this table put together a good red-white deck. Yeah. And then round one, we're up against red-white. Oh, and look, they had better bombs in their pool. Yeah, It's really frustrating. I've come to the conclusion that 
I do like the um, fact that we can go in at any point and do our games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that um, we can wait a few days or whatever. The, that time convenience is great. Mm -hmm. But I think it falls down, and this is even more evident when you're drafting cube. Yes, yeah. that I completely agree with. I, I, I personally don't uh, actually really mind the uh, the draft leagues. I actually I love the sealed leagues because that those sealed doesn't it doesn't matter, matter at all. Yeah. But um, even for draft, like I, you know, I can understand that you probably lose a few percentage off okay. it just because of that sort of thing. But for cube, I really hate. Going, oh, well, I've got the mana leak, so I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. And then suddenly it's turn five, and your opponent's like, I will mana leak your, your eight drop or whatever. And you're like, no, but I had the mana leak. What are you doing? Yeah, and that's just, like, I can accept it from regular formats, but from Cube, it's all about knowing that you are the one person at the table who's playing Reanimator. Yes. Or the one who got all the mana rocks. Or and the I think one it really takes away from the experience. It really does, I especially agree. cute. Yeah, I hope that's something that they're look, going to look at. I don't know how they can address it. I don't know that they mm. can. Well, they're, they're talking about, uh, you know, re-evaluating uh, um, what draft formats are available in a non-league sense, like mm -hmm. party prize mm -hmm. payouts and things like that. Okay. So they could be deciding, you know, well, we, we want the 8-4s for sure as a, as a draftable at a regular type of draft as opposed to a league, and you know, we might want like a that would be, or something. Uh, that would be nice if there was at least a little bit of um, option. I mean, yes. I also hate single elimination tournaments in general mm -hmm. because. Um, if you get mana I, screwed. <laughs> yeah, it's a matter of. It comes down to variance and skill. But if even if you're. Um, reasonably skilled, you still come up against variants, and you're out in the first round. Well, that kind of stinks. You've just lost out on the money that you put and in. And it's yeah. not a cheap um, no. pastime. That's the thing for us. Drafting, having a, tr a channel where we're trying to get a draft up every week, we can't afford to, you know, we got out the first, I guess we're going to have to do another draft this week. It's just, it's expensive. So, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing that bugs me about the leagues is that even in the Swiss leagues there's no uh, prize for winning one round. So if you're 0-2, often people just drop from the league and it's hard to get that third match in if you just want to play Magic. Yeah. You know? And you'd think that Wizards would care about uh, having people play the game more. I know they're a company and I know that everything boils down to money in the end, but that's not how I see the people who build Magic the Gathering treating it. I see them treating it like a game that's beloved and like they really enjoy producing a, a quality product for people to enjoy. And I think they're losing some equity there mm -hmm. with letting people play more. It was the same problem I had with the... Um, the flashbacks, the year of flashbacks, mm -hmm. being single limb. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to play this old format, and I don't want to draft it once, and because I don't know it, lose in the first round and never get to play it. And then have to spend another $15? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I would love to play it once through, and then, huh, that was fun, I'll play it again. Or, I didn't really like that one, I'll wait until next week. Mm -hmm. But only getting one round because you don't know what you're doing and lose... Yeah. That wasn't, it wasn't worth it for me. I, I think that's especially a, a bit of a concern if, like us, you also do draft fairly regularly in person. Mm -hmm. Like our, you know, our magic shop that we go to, he does occasionally flashback yep. drafts, and he also does grab bag drafts right before a new set comes <laughs> oh, out. Those are so fun. And the thing is, is that if you are losing, you will be paired up against other people who are losing, and you can still have a ridiculously fun time playing with terrible cards, and you're playing against someone who also has no idea what they're doing. Yeah, and if you're like us and draft online and draft at the shop, then you already have a limited magic budget, and I'm going to spend the money where I get the most games mm -hmm. in, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. So, uh, Let's hope that's something that Wizards is going to look at in the future, but... Speaking of the game shop, how did you guys do at League this week? I didn't go to League this week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been uh, ridiculously busy at work, so I'm going to catch up my games at F&M this week. Ooh, 
Um, I've had to do that a couple of times throughout mm-hmm. the league, mm-hmm. but I literally, I have weekends off, but I was at my workplace all weekend because yeah. something happened at work. Things. Yeah. So I really needed a night to decompress. Yeah. So how How'd you? you do, Laura? I did pretty well. So I went 2-2, two two, which is fine, because I just needed one more win to lock solid for top eight, right. uh, which... I have now done. And Yay. then in there's still one more week left to go, so I will probably win at least one more round next week, I hope. Um, but yeah, in my pack that I opened up, I opened up a pretty sweet black bomb. Uh, the mythic uh, demon, the three black, 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 where when it enters the battlefield, it gives everything minus two, minus two until end of turn, and then you can return stuff from a graveyard to the battlefield under your control for a couple mana and a few energy. Ooh. So it's pretty good, and my black has always been pretty good. I just didn't have enough of it to really want to make it into a deck. But I also opened up like a contraband kingpin, the blue black mm-hmm. one for lifelinker That's that the has one artifact that synergy, and um, a few other things. So my my blue is very good. I've always had blue as one of my main colors in my decks, and my white is also really good, but I've decided for next week I'm just going to adjust things around a little bit, try out the blue-black, see if I like it, because it's not that big of a deal if I don't. I'm already locked, so. It's funny, because I've been blue-black since the beginning, mm-hmm. and I was like blue-black-green or blue-black-white, or I tried blue-black-red and it didn't really work that well. Yeah. Um, but blue-black has always been my deck, and now I'm looking at um, skewing it more heavily into black-white, Mm -hmm. simply because of all the pacifism style effects because i think the guy who's in first place yeah i need a little more to deal with the bombs that are in his deck this is a guy who has a who's running uh green red and has chandra uh black oh are you talking about green i'm talking about john yeah yeah He's, he's got Chandra. He's, I think he's just splashing a block at this point. But yeah, so he's got okay. Chandra. He's got a Virgilus Gearhulk. He's got Ugh. two Yehennies. Yeah. It's basically gross. Yeah. I haven't won a single game against him because my mm. deck's really bad against and him. And see, I can beat him, but I just haven't because I haven't drawn what I need. So. Yeah, I've gotten close before, but he, like, every card in his deck is miles quality wise above mine is because mm. I don't have any complete bomb mythics like that until I open up my demon. But pacifism effects work really well against Yeheni, so... That is so true. <laughs> yeah, so that's what cool. I want to try. And the Gear Hulk, for that matter. Yeah. Because uh, if you wait until he drops it, then you can pacify whatever he's put the counters on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Chandra, I'm not sure how to deal with. Uh, negate. <laughs> I do have a couple in my board, so maybe. Yeah, so so that's basically how my league went. We still have one more week, and then after that, the next Tuesday will be the top eight playoffs. I was in sixth place last week, and if I get my games in and I at least go two and two, I should be top eight. Well, plus I don't know. Uh, Sean, who's the uh, owner of the game store that we play at, he is in the top eight and he never plays the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So oh, he doesn't? No, okay. it's actually top nine. We've also All had right. somebody um, drop. I don't know where he was situated. Yes, yeah, se- several people have. Yeah. Um, and they're actually looking at changing the way they do it for next season so that there's a, a top eight and a bottom eight mm-hmm. playoffs for like a great. consolation prize. Yeah. Which, yeah, I think that's great, too, because it gives people who might actually want to stay around and play, but also feel like there's no point if they're not in the top eight, a reason to mm-hmm. keep playing. Sometimes keep playing. you fall behind, or sometimes you just never do open a great pool. And, like, I am a terrible trader. Mm-hmm. I am not an aggressive um, trader, so I fall down there. So that's really cool. I think it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. And it shows that um, they're interested in all of us enjoying the, the process and the game itself, not just, you know, we'll keep the top eight people happy, but mm-hmm. wants yeah. everybody to be involved. So mm. that's really cool. Yeah. So that's leagues. Mm-hmm. So finally, um, we wanted to talk a little bit more about... Um, oh, I forgot about Lone Air. I forgot about the most important part of <laughs> Magic Online. It's not Gamble. the most important part. It was yesterday, because it was so cool. Okay, so I have been eyeing the Momir deck on Magic Online forever, and I finally went ahead and bought one. And what 
what is the Momir deck? So you can just buy the Momir avatar online, but I went and got the deck because it came with a bunch of fancy lands and <laughs> guru lands and whatever. But Momir Basic is a format that you can play specifically online. Uh, it is it would not be a tenable format in any other. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. <laughs> so um, you get a uh, a deck of sixty lands, and this avatar, who's named Momir Vig, and his ability is you start the game with four extra life, so your life total is twenty four, and his ability is pay X and discard a card to put a a token copy of a random creature with converted mana cost X onto the battlefield. And this creature could be from anywhere in magic. But that sounds crazy! It is crazy! (laughs) So what I really want to do with it is pay six mana, discard a land, and get a primeval titan, because that would be sweet. That would be funny, actually. He actually looked up what the odds were, and it was like, <laughs> it was like 1 in 349 or something like that. Yeah, there are a lot of six yeah. drops in magic. So, Steph, when you got to eight mana in the first game, what did you, <laughs> what did you get? Because this is really exciting, right? It's like Christmas on both sides of the field. You tap your mana, you sack your land, and you're like, <gasps> what am I going to get? What am I going to get? And so what did you get for eight mana? Okay. First, it sounds like a ridiculously luck-based uh, format, and it is. But there's also some strategy. Mm-hmm. Like, if you play a a uh, card, discard a land every turn, you're never going to get to 8 mana. So you have to skip a turn to get to 8 mana, just the way you draw and discard. Mm-hmm. So when I finally got there, 8 mana, I tapped out, I pitched my island, and I got... Scornful Egotist. And what is that? <laughs> it's amazing. It is Our opponent seven. was like, what the hell? Seven and a blue for a 1-1. One, one. And what does it say in the text box? That has got to be something good. What does it do? It must blow up your It has right? morph. You can play it uh, face down as a 2-2 creature for three mana. Sure, and when you, when you morph it up, does it instantly kill it your It morphs planet? up for a blue. And what does it do? That's it. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and actually, the flavor text is genius, because it's got this... He's a human wizard, and he doesn't look like a human. He looks like some sort of weird blue ooze thing. Mm-hmm. And the flavor text says, Once I was human, now I am so much more. And I am a 1-1 one, one for you. Yes. By more, they mean less. He's a 1-mana... or He's an 8-mana 1-1. One, one. And okay, so the reason this card exists is he was from Scourge. And the set Scourge had this mechanic where converted mana cost mattered. So just playing him as a morph for three mana Mm -hmm. and then unmorphing him for blue. So you could have a card that says, that you you flip up and it says, do X damage to target opponent where X is the highest converted mana cost among Among permanents you control. Yeah, Yeah, so him having eight... CMC was supposed to matter, but it, it did matter, didn't it, Stab? Actually, he's just off. <laughs> and we've got we got him twice in two separate games last night. The, odds, the odds of which are were one in a hundred and eighty something. Nine. Like there are only so many eight yes. drop. We googled it to find out. <laughs> um, the guy, our opponent's like. So let me ask, is that card just bad? <laughs> and I explained the whole thing about Scourge, and then I short formed it too. Uh, by which I mean, yes, he's just bad. Yes. It was so hilariously disappointing and hilarious, <laughs> this stupid one one. On the other hand, I got a random, like, ogre that when your opponent, uh, when a creature attacks you, you get a 3-3 um, a three, three elemental unless they pay 3 for each creature attacking. Oh. And they dropped something that said... Um, uh, all creatures have double strike and must attack each turn of Fable. Oh. So he attacked me with all after tapping out to play this thing. Yes. And I got a bunch like of eight three three double strikers <laughs> and was able to wipe his board with them. So yeah. And to be fair That's just so kooky. It's my favorite <laughs> format ever. To be fair, our eight mana one one died valiantly to a Kifkin token. Oh, totally. <laughs> he traded with a Kifkin token that the opponent didn't even have to pay for. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but oh oh 
So board state is both sides, our side and their side, is just stacked with creatures. With creatures, like it's ridiculous. If either one of us swings for, you know, plunges in. This is in a different game. Yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. And then stepped, you know, pays his I mana. I was on six mana. Doesn't swing first because he's like, I'm, you know, I'm just going to. Well, if you get a haste creature, yeah. Sure. So. Yeah. So he plays the creature without reading it and tells them, what does this creature well, you, do? They come into the battlefield automatically, yeah, right? Yeah, and what does it do? Um, when this elemental or tri- or kraken or whatever it was hits the battlefield, um, bounce all other creatures to their own, owner's hands. Board <laughs> So I was left, left with a 5-5 five 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 five. kraken. Okay. Like, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Although the first game, I think, we've never played this game before. So our opponent taps his three first three mana, discards his card, and what was I don't it's remember what the card was, Ma- but Magus of the Moat. So it's an O three that has the moat text. Creatures without flying can't attack. And there is no removal <laughs> unless it's creature based removal. Yes. So we sat there for <laughs> ever. Ten turns. All of us just you know oh look. It's not a flyer. And then he and got... And he got Sengir Vampire and... Oh. And, yeah. he got, and then he got... Um, Some The gargoyle. Angel. The... No, it was the... Um, the artifact gargoyle. Oh, it was uh, Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Whatever that yeah, was, Sphinx. yeah. And so we're like, okay. We so died real quick. We yeah. can't do anything else. Although we had a creature that was gaining us six... Like, well, three life on each upkeep, so, you know... We were took doing a little fine, while. and then he got the thing. If you have ten tickets to spend on Mitgo, go and get yourself a Momir avatar and play this game. You will learn so many random <laughs> And old, if you already do, cards. and you want to play, message us, because we'll friend you on Mitgo, because we'd love to have people to play with, because it's not always Our, as easy to find... Our earrings, but uh, name will be in the uh, in the, dis- in the, in the show notes. Yeah. Hey, do you have uh, Momir? Uh, not yet, but I'm probably gonna pick one up. <laughs> Check and play it with out. A couple of friends I have. Yeah. Also, if you so buy fun. the deck from the Magic Store, um, it comes with uh, five Guru lands. Mm-hmm. So if you care about those, they're gorgeous, and a bunch of full art lands and oh, just really random, nice. yeah. really interesting. It's really lands. cool. I have seen uh, some people play Momir before, though, and I think my favorite is always when they create a creature that has a, when this creature enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless. Yeah. yeah. And it just so immediately good. goes to the graveyard, and then you're like, well, what did I, what, I, where did my creature go? Or if it's a zero zero <laughs> that gets plus two for each ally you control. Yeah, or, or something you know, like whatever. that. Yeah, it's really, what's really gross, though, is when your opponent taps their three Lands and they get a uh, like a mana dork of some sort. Yeah, that's because oh. that's very good. Suddenly Sick. you're like, whoa, because okay. they're up one land for the duration, right? Yeah, yeah, which is really really fun. Um, now eight mana is where a bunch of good stuff sits, but I believe eight mana is also phage the untouchable. Seven, seven. Isn't it? Okay, so yeah, you skip. Seven, if you want to not hit Phage. No, you roll a dice, dude. That's what yeah, I said. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean... Because what are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds? I don't um, know. We haven't checked. <laughs> but also, um, when you get above eight, if you can, um, there are only seven or eight creatures that yeah, are there's higher than two. 11 CMC. Yeah, so, like, if you uh, actually just check out the breakdown, there's, like, you know, if you get to... 15 mana, you will hit Emrakul, because that's the only one. Or There are two. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of... There is a fair amount of strategy that you can apply to it. Like only are, playing swamps and mountains, because yes. there are creatures with yeah. island walk, so you don't play island. Well, no, no, there are creatures with swamp and mountain walk, it's just that the creatures that have... I think it's um, island and forest walk are the most common. Yeah. 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 Yep. So one of our opponents had a 1-1 one, one that did a thing... And it had island walkies, and he messaged us. He was us. like, "You should totes play an island." <laughs> so we're like, "Yeah, we'll get right on that." Yeah, we're discard. So, whereas some people do prefer the domain strategy, where you play at least one of each basic type because some creatures have activated abilities, or say sacrifice it unless you control an island mm-hmm. or something like yeah. that. So actually, I had that happen where I had a creature that would have won the game, but it said sack unless you control an island, and in that game he had. You know, said you should play an island. <laughs> and sure not, when that happened, he was like, I told you you should have played the island. Yeah. Like, dang it. Dang so, it. anyway, a lot of fun. Check it out. Yeah. 
So sure. what was the last thing you wanted to um, say? Yeah. We were going to talk a little bit more about, we've talked about the fact that I like aggro, you like mid-range, she likes control. Do we even have time for this conversation on this cast? Um, uh, no. Maybe I should wait till next week. For, so for next week, we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about why we like these and what we dislike about the rest. Hey, that sounds like a great topic for next week. All right, sweet. I love that. <laughs> oh, we should really. Way to have clock. a casual conversation about. No, <laughs> we don't need to clock anything. We're hanging out. And he didn't want to have show notes, and I was going, "Oh no, we have to have." <laughs> yeah, he, he was winding you up a little, a little bit, a little bit. I, I like to have things just so and neat. And, and I get that, but we say right in the intro that this is a casual this conversation. Is ca- this is casual. Friends. I did. We do frequently make notes. At, during our casual conversations. So. Hey, I didn't write down what you're saying, so this is casual. <laughs> right. I didn't script it for you. All right, Spikey. <laughs> Perfectionism. Not at all. So this was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Salem. Yes. The, She's been here the whole time. The draft much. cap basically has just been hopping up into my lap. Yeah. And then yeah. Kenny kicked off. And, yeah. and if you're wondering about the, the reference, yeah, this is my cat, Salem. He's a big black Maine Coon, and he always seems to come... And get up when we're in front of the microphone. So yep. we've named the um, media parent company that we're doing our podcast under, DraftCat Media. After him. Right, yep. say? And, yep. and the, uh, the picture is a stylized image of him at the window. Yep. So if you want to hear more from DraftCat, you should check out our drafts on Miko. <laughs> yeah, because he sure. always makes an appearance. That's right. We should listen to him. He probably knows better than we do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was fun. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye. 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 How long did it run? <laughs>